So this is today's lesson. If you missed the first couple of minutes, um, I will just answer a question that I got asked quite a bit on Instagram. So some people asked me about the difference between CV, resume and curriculum. Uh, curriculum is a false friend, maybe in your language you call the piece of paper that has all your qualifications in education and your work experience and everything on, which you give to a potential employer. Um, a curriculum or something like this in your language, it's a false friend. It's not a curriculum in English. That's something different. In the UK, we call this piece of paper that we give to a potential employer when we are interested in a job, a CV. If you are in the United States, then you would call it a resume. So one's American English, resume, and one's British English, CV. So if that clears any people's doubts, then good. Let's start firstly, I hope you guys have pen and paper as well, because you're going to learn a lot today. Let's start firstly with what we need to include on our CVs. So this may sound like very obvious stuff, but depending on the country you're from, what you need to include on a CV is very different. So here, what you need to include on your CV are your contact information, a profile or a personal profile or a personal statement, you may, you may see it called, your education, your work experience, your skills and achievements, your interests, that's optional, and references, also optional. So the last two, interests and references, are optional. You don't have to include them, but I will explain why it is good to include them later. What you don't need to include on your CV in the UK is your date of birth. You do not need to write your date of birth. You don't need to write your marriage status. So if you're, if you're married, if you're divorced, if you're widowed, if you're single, um, you don't need to write that. Your sexual orientation, you don't need to write that. So if you're straight or you're gay, <laughs> you don't need to write that. Um, however, when you apply for job positions in the UK, because of the Equal Opportunities Act, you may get asked about your sexual orientation. So you may be asked in your job application, you don't need to write it on your CV, but on the job application, you may be asked what your sex... Your, well, let, me re let me say that again. You may be asked what your sexual orientation is. Um, there is normally a box that says prefer not to say. This is actually supposed to be a way of um, stopping discrimination because they say that certain companies have to have a certain percent of people of a ethnicity and a nationality and a gender and, um, and of a sexual orientation. So they're not doing this because they want to find out, you know, who's, <laughs> who's gay, who's not, who's bisexual. It's supposed to actually provide you with a fairer opportunity in theory. Anyway, that's just in case you're asked that. They, uh, you also don't need to write your ethnicity. You don't need to write your nationality, your gender identity. So you don't, I've written gender identity because there are many different types of identities nowadays, um, but you don't need to specify, for example, if you are female or if you are male or so on. You don't need to specify your religion on your CV. You don't need to specify if you have children or if you plan to have children. And you do not need to include a photograph of yourself unless it's specified in the application. So um, if, for example, you're applying for a modeling job or an actor <laughs> position, an acting position, then you may need a photograph of yourself. However, for I don't want to say normal jobs, but for the majority of jobs, you do not need a photograph of yourself. It's completely unnecessary. So let's start firstly with the contact information. What kind of contact information do we need to put on our CV? Well, of course, your full name. We need your email address as well. That's important. Your address, contact number. So this can be a mobile number or if you have a phone in your house, a landline number. Maybe you want to put that as well. It's up to you. And also your LinkedIn. Um, someone once asked me if they should put their Facebook or their Instagram, things like that. Now, depending on the job that you're applying for, you may want to put your social media 
okay? So let's say, for example, you're applying for a design opportunity, so you maybe want to work as a graphic designer, and your Instagram page is a way of showcasing your work, then maybe you want to put your Instagram handle there, and that's fine. If you're applying as a waiter in a bar or something like that, then you don't need to put your Facebook and your Instagram and LinkedIn and things like that. LinkedIn is usually more for more professional uh, positions. Someone's asked a good question. What about mental health issues? No, nope, you don't have to write down if you have any mental health issues on your CV. In the application form, you may get asked, like, do you have any medical conditions and things like that? If you wish to specify it, then you can. It's up to you. Yes, your LinkedIn account, that's right. Um, there are seven points that must be in a CV. Is there any additional information? Not sure what you mean, but no. These are the things that you need to include or you don't need to include. What about religion? Already included that, yeah? You don't need to write your religion. So if you are a Muslim, you don't need to say you are a Muslim on your CV. If you are a Christian, you don't need to say you're a Christian on your CV. It's not necessary. Anyway, let's have a look at an example of a CV with the contact information. So this person's written personal information. They've given their first name and their surname. Super clear. Yeah, John Smith. Um, all of this is fictional, by the way. I've just invented towns and cities and so on. So this person is from 123 Big Street in small town. They've got their postcode and then the UK. So when you write your address in the UK, you need to put the number of the house that you're living in or the apartment, whatever, the name of the streets, then the name of the city, and then your postcode, okay? And then the last thing is the UK, but it would be assumed that you live in the UK already if you are applying for a job in the UK. Though I know that some people may be applying from abroad before they enter the UK. Then their telephone number, and you can see how I've also abbreviated telephone to tell, okay? That's absolutely fine. And then email, of course. Now, in the past, <laughs> I once um, proofread a CV for someone and their email address was something like, oh, I don't remember what it was exactly, but it was something like Pink Pixie uh, 235, something like that. It was, it was ridiculous, something you would make when you're like 12 or 13. And employers do look at that, so make sure that you're using a professional sounding and professional looking email address. One with your name is fine and it's okay, but something like Pink Pixie 259 I mean, yeah, the employer doesn't want to see that. Any questions so far? What about mentioning address? Exactly, you need to mention your address and your personal uh, contact information in case they need to write you letters or something like that. Um, sometimes when you go to an interview, they will write you a letter to say if you've been accepted or rejected, or they give you a phone call. Or nowadays, <laughs> if, if you've been rejected, they just don't call you, so. <laughs> now the profile section, otherwise known as the personal profile or personal statement, is a short block of text right at the top of your CV, which is essentially a summary about you. So in your personal profile, you need to include who you are. So who are you? What can you offer the company that you're applying to? What are your future career goals? And make sure you write this in no more than 150 words. Here's an example of John's here. A highly motivated and working, oh, sorry, a highly motivated motivated and hard-working individual with recent experience in retail and management as well as a degree in business and management from the University of Big Town, it's invented, currently seeking a role in management with the long-term aspiration of becoming an area manager for your company. So John here, he said who he is, He's talked about what he can do for the company because he's saying, oh, I'm motivated. I have recent experience in retail. And I'm going to assume that John here is applying for a manager position or something like that in retail. What are your future career goals? So John here said that he wants to become an area manager in the company. Notice how this is also written. It's not like I am a highly motivated. I am currently seeking. 
we don't use the pronoun I. Now that means that you don't have to use it at, at all. There's no rule. But here, um, typically in more formal writing, we tend to remove the pronoun I because it sounds a little bit like, I am highly motivated. I am the best. Me, me, me. <laughs> um, so we remove that and we refer to ourselves in the third person. But we just don't include the pronoun a lot of the time. So we don't say, um, in John's case, he is a highly motivated da 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 da. We don't do that. We just cut the pronoun, we cut the verb to be, and we just go straight for a highly motivated da 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 da. Okay? The next part is education. So you need to talk about what you studied and the grades you received. So make sure that you check online and convert your grades. I've seen it time and time and time again when I've checked people's CVs and proofread them in the past. People don't convert their grades and they say something like, I don't know, in their degree that they got a seven. What, what does that mean? What is a seven? Is that a seven out of a hundred? If so, that's really bad. Is it a seven out of ten? Is it a seven out of seven? That seven means nothing to me. <laughs> so make sure that you check online to see how your grades in your country are converted into the grades in the UK. All right. Um, make sure you also include the dates that you studied, where you studied, and any extracurricular activities or work experience you did while at university or maybe at college, at sixth form and so on. So let's say, for example, here. Now, John doesn't have any uh, extracurricular activities that he's added. But let's imagine that when he went to the University of Big Town, he was the captain of the football team. OK, and so he could write that down as well. And employers like to see that because it shows that you're doing something else outside of your academic studies. It shows that you're a bit more human and that you're also not just study, 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 and that you have a bit of a life and also let's say it's being the captain of a football team, those skills from that translate into work. So if you're a captain of a football team, it means you're very disciplined, it means you're very hardworking, it means that you're able to control a team and lead a team. So there are many skills just from writing that sentence that an employer can pull out of that to think, yep, I think he'll be good in a management role leading a team because he used to lead a team when he was at university. So. You know, really do think about these kind of things. They may be absolutely nothing to you, but to an employer, they may look and think, ah, yeah, that's a really good thing that they did at university or college, whatever. Maybe volunteered, something like that. Put that on your CV. In the UK, they really like to see people who have done voluntary work. So if you want to include that on your CV, I highly suggest you do, because people really like seeing that in the UK because it shows a good work ethic and it shows as well that you're willing to work even if it's unpaid. So <laughs> something to bear in mind. So you see what John's done here. He's put the title education and training. Um, he's written the dates when he was studying. He's written the kind of qualification. He's written the, the name of the topic as well. So his, um, his GCSEs that he did at school. In your country, it'll be something different, of course. You write that down, you convert it. And also he's written his grade. So he's converted his grade um, for the employer. Now in the UK, if you have a degree, the grading system may be extremely different to your country because it works in essentially first, two, one, two, two, third, fail. <laughs> and to you, that may mean absolutely nothing. And that's why you need to check and you need to convert. All right. Then the employers in the UK know what kind of grade that you got in your country. So they know, yeah, they know what you got. Any questions so far? Let me see. Emma, should I mention who I am as something which can be measurable? I'm not sure what you mean, Esther. Could you give me an example there? Something that can be measurable? Give me an example there. Um, do you need to write down the way we solve problems, our weaknesses? 
I mean, you don't need to go into so much detail about it because if you have examples of situations where you've possibly been in a leadership role or anything like that, or in a situation in a role where problem solving is a required skill, then you maybe want to mention that situation or that role, but actually mentioning mm, your weaknesses, I wouldn't do that. I would not mention your weaknesses. I would mention if you're able to solve problems, so if you're a problem solver, then you have problem solving skills, I would mention that in the personal profile or in the key skills section, the skills and achievements, which we're going to look at really soon. Is the word limit so strict? This is a really good question because in the past I've had people come up to me with freaking huge CVs, like three or four pages, and I have to tell them, you're gonna have to cut a lot of this down. Okay, so um, the reason why I tell people to keep the profile short, uh, while well, not just me, everyone tells people to keep the profile short, it's because you only have a limited amount of time to get the attention of the employer. Okay, they've got a stack of a hundred CVs and you're just one of them, my friend. So they need to go through them super quick to find someone who's gonna be fit for the job. All right, so you need to get their attention as quickly as possible. If you can keep your personal profile short and concise and direct and straight to the point instead of waffling on, perfect. You don't need it to be so long. If you need, if you need something a bit longer, then you write a cover letter. That's not something I'm going to talk about today because that could take another hour to do. <laughs> but you need to you need to keep it very concise on your CV because in the UK, normally people expect only two pages. What I mean by two pages to 100% clarify, I don't think I have a piece of paper around, but it's just one piece of A4 paper on one side and the other side, one piece of paper, that is it, okay? Don't be printing out lots of pages, stapling it and sending it off. They're not going to read it because they don't have the time. They have hundreds of other applications, okay? Hundreds of other applications from people who have spent the time trying to make their CV concise. So you need to do the same. Any other questions? I'm really sorry if I'm missing some questions because the comments are like, da 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 um, should I put a photo on my CV? Go back to the start. What did I say that you should not include on your CV or you don't need to include on your CV? Go back to that section. Pay attention. <laughs> People are not paying attention. Work experience, the next part here. So in the work experience section, it's kind of structured in a similar way to the education section. So work experience, you need to include where you've worked, of course, even if it was unpaid and voluntary, how long you worked there with the dates. If you know the, the month, that's fine. You don't need the exact date, just the month. The roles you did and what or who you were responsible for. So if you were responsible for a team or were you responsible for handling large amounts of cash? Were you responsible for opening up the office and closing it in the, after in, in the afternoon? That'd be great. In the evening and so on. What were your responsibilities in your job? And then the most important thing, be prepared to explain any work gaps in your CV. So what I mean by this is, if let's say on your CV, it says that you started a job in 2012 and you finished 2013, and then you started another job in 2015 until the present date, the employer is probably going to ask, what happened in that year? What did you do in that year? Because they want to know, oh, is this person a bit of a bum? And they just sat at home playing on the PlayStation <laughs> for a year, what did they do? So you maybe don't have to explain that in your CV, but they will probably ask about it in the interview. So do prepare yourself. Let's have a look at an example. So work experience, that's the title we can use, work experience. We have the dates. So you see here, we're not writing the actual date that we started, it's just the month, just so they have an idea of how long you've been working there for. So we've got the date until the present. Uh, John has been working as an assistant manager. So he's put the position. 
His responsibilities are opening and closing the store, assisting customers. He's responsible for staff and delegating roles. Then we've got the employer, so where he works and the type of business. The type of business part is optional. It's up to you. I don't normally include that because my CV, for example, is all teaching. So people know that it's teaching, 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 teaching. So if you maybe have had a career change or something like that, then yeah, you may want to, to specify the kind of business it was. It's the same for the second part as well. So between January 2009, September 2011, John worked as a sales assistant, da 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 da, -da. you can see all that there. So the next section is about skills and achievements. This is probably one of the most important parts. So you need to write down the skills which are relevant to the position. I've read CVs in the past where people have written down things like, oh, I don't know, really just absolutely unrelated achie achievements and skills. So if here you have any certificates for training that you've done that aren't included in your education, like formal education, this is a place where you can put it as well. So for example, I've had people before in the past, they've applied for office jobs, yet they had like some level two food safety training. And I'm thinking this doesn't even relate to the office job that you're applying for. So you don't need to include it, remove it. The employer won't care, so remove it. Achievements which relate to the position as well are also super important. So here's an example section. We've got skills and competences up at the top. That's our title. Now, John here, mm -hmm, he's done a lot of studying in his life as John. Um, he's written down the languages that he speaks. So he's got English, he's a native speaker. His German is B2 and his French is C1. So if you speak multiple languages, which you probably will do if you're here, because you speak your native language and quite possibly English, I'm guessing, I hope. <laughs> then you can put that on there as well. Massive tip guys, do not lie about your English level. I've read CVs from people who put down that their English is higher than what it actually is. The problem is, is that if you lie on your CV, even if it's a little lie, like that you, your English is higher than what it really is, how's the employer going to trust you? Okay, if you're lying on your CV, then you may lie about other things in the future. It doesn't show you're very trustworthy. So be as honest as you possibly can be on your CV because you don't wanna get called out later for lying. Let's imagine you wrote down on your CV the, that you had a C1 level of English when you really had a B1. I've seen it happen, really. Um, and then that employer thinks, wow, wow, he's got fantastic English. Let's invite him in for an interview. They invite him in for an interview and he can hardly speak English, okay? The employer's gonna know that he lied on his CV and that doesn't look good, so be very careful. John has also included here some social skills and competences. So he's a highly skilled communicator, enjoys working as part of a team, as well as being the leader and being responsible for giving direction. So that makes sense if John is applying for a role as a manager in a store, for example. Organizational skills and competencies. So these are all just kind of subsections for the skills and competencies part. You can include your own sections depending on the kind of skills and qualifications and the job that you are applying for, okay? So here, John has included that he's got computer skills, he knows Microsoft Office, blah, blah, blah. So yes, that's all super helpful. Interest. So this part is optional, but um, a good reason to include this is that it adds a human element to your CV. So sometimes when we look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of CVs, we dehumanize people. We dehumanize the person behind the paper. So what many people do is they include an interests and hobbies section. Um, make sure that your your hobbies and interests and things are true, <laughs> because Sometimes in the interview, the, the person may ask you about it, you know? They may also be into the same thing as you. So yeah, that would be a bonus. Here's an example. So on John's CV, we've got interests and hobbies. Plays 
and look here, I play no, because then it's to me, 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 my CV, my CV. Remove that, put it in third person, but just remove the subject. Players in a heavy metal band and visits the South Coast regularly to go rock climbing. So, sounds like John has a pretty interesting life. <laughs> the final part, and then I'm going to look at some questions in the chat. So your references, this is also optional, but it's highly recommended that you have it as well. So then the employers have the references at hand and they don't need to go back and forth emailing. They have the references there, it saves them time, so that's good. So you need the name of the reference. So a reference in the UK can be someone in academics, for example, someone who was your teacher at school or a university lecturer. Uh, it could also be a previous employer. It cannot be family friends. It cannot be, um, yeah, family either. However, you can have what's called a personal reference. So you've got a work reference, academic reference, and a personal reference. A personal reference is maybe from your teacher, but maybe it's like a private teacher. It could maybe be from, I don't know, someone who you who you know wellish, <laughs> who's able to write a little bit about you, okay? So you need to write the name, the contact information, and the title and position in the company of the reference. So here, um, John has written Paul Wills as his reference. You may choose to add more. People say to include at least two references, but it depends, you know? Sometimes you've only ever had one job, or maybe you've had no jobs and you only have your teachers as references from school and university. So we've got here the store manager, that's the title. The, the where is it? Ah, yeah, the super supermarket, that's the name of the place that he works in. Big town, that's the name of the city, so we know exactly where Paul works. Paul's email address and then Paul's number in case people want to contact him. So let's have a look at some questions. If I've missed some of your questions, then either they've been answered already in this live and you need to go back and watch it, or I've just missed it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, Esther. Yep. So a measurable, measurable skill such as I was able to do three of the five operational standards. I was able to complete the work on time. I don't see why. Ah, do you mean, for example, working towards deadlines? You can write on your CV that you're able to work towards deadlines. Definitely. If, if that's what you mean, I hope. <laughs> What is your tip for people who are looking for a new start? For example, I was a biology teacher and I want to work as an accountant. Aha, yeah, how do I do this transition in my CV? So Priscilla, what I've done in this live, or if you're watching the replay, hello, future people, um, in the description of this video, you will see some links. One of the links takes you to a website that shows you different types of CVs. So one of the CVs is about when you change the kind of job that you want to do. So like in your situation, you work in biology, now you want to change to accountancy. So it talks about career changes. That's really normal in England, don't worry. So long as you're able to transfer the skills that were in your previous job to an accountancy job, it's fine, okay? Employers do worry a little bit if people change um, because they think, oh, maybe this person might change this job in a few months and they might not like it. And therefore, you know, I've wasted my time hiring this person and now I've got to do it all again and hire another person. OK, so you you need to explain why you're changing. You need to explain why you're changing in your personal profile section. You may also want to write a cover letter to explain further. So have a look at that link in the description of this video. Here references aren't necessary because they ask a formal letter. Um, so as I said, they are optional here in the UK to include references on your CV, but it's recommended simply because it saves the employer time. So if the employer decides to hire you, they don't need to email you and say, where are your references? Can you give me their details? Then you need to get them, send them. And there's a lot of time wasted 
if they're already on your CV, you're saving people so much time, okay? Any other questions? Is it fine to include a language profici proficiency if you are at an A1 level? If you feel it's relevant to the position and you feel it is important to mention for that job, mention it. But, I mean, for most jobs, probably not. For me as an English teacher, I write it on my CV that I have like A1 in French and A2 in German simply because I want the employer to know that I have a very basic awareness of the kind of grammar and therefore the kind of problems that students may have in those languages, you know, when they learn English. So I write it down, but that's because I feel it's relevant to my job. So it's up to you. It completely depends. Um, what else? I think that's it. Two pages is okay. Or must I have only one page? So you can have one page. Perfect. If it's one page, great. <laughs> but some people can't keep all their all their details and everything on one page. They need to go onto two pages. Two pages is fine. Three pages, you're pushing it. Stick to two maximum if you can. Any other questions? What about the conclusion? This is not an essay, so you don't need a conclusion, okay? This is not an essay, it's a CV. Could the motivation be measurable? Mm, I'm not sure what you mean by this whole measurable thing. <laughs> um, they're interesting questions, but you could say, like it said on John's CV, that he is a motivated person. Now, what I'm going to do is just switch over whoop, over to this one and I'm going to show you an example of John's CV all together as one. So you'll see that it's only two pages long, okay? That's the end of the CV. So John has chosen to write his uh, CV up at the top here. Personal information, you can see this section is very clear. His name is super big compared to the rest of the details because we want to make sure that people know exactly what his name is and whose CV it is because if an employer is going through hundreds of CVs and they think, ah, oh God, I really like that one guy. What was his name? John, John Smith. Where's John Smith? And they're going through all these CVs, okay? They want to make sure that they can see your name well. What some people do as well is they change this curriculum part up here and they change it to their name. So maybe they, they write their name up here as well. That's what I do on my CV as well. So if people are going through hundreds of papers, then they can see, oh, my name is in the top corner. So it's up to you, personal preference, but just make sure your name is really clear, not super tiny like some people do. Then he's written down the desired position, so the one that he's applying for. He's applying for a store manager. Then we've got his personal profile, which relates to the job. His work experience comes after that. Then we've got his education and training, skills and competences, and then his interests and hobbies, and then his references. So you can see the structure here of how we do it. Some people, depending on the kind of CV, if it's an education-based CV, which you'll see in the link of this video, there are different types. If it's an education-based and education-focused CV, then you'll put your education and your qualifications first. So you'll put details, like contact information, the profile, then you'll put the work experience. Sorry, you'll put the education. If it's more work-based and you want to showcase your work experience rather than your qualifications, because maybe you have more work experience than qualifications, put your work experience first. It's up to you. Depends. There are loads of different types of CVs. You'll see plenty of them in the link below. I put loads of different examples there. Education, skills and competences, yes. So the one person asking about how do we conclude a CV, well, you don't write a conclusion because it's not an essay. So what you can do is finish with either interests and hobbies or you can finish with references, okay? Any questions? Have you heard about the Europass CV template? Uh, can you use that for applying for jobs? Yes, you can, yes. 
I think my boyfriend used that when he first came to the UK. So yes, you can. And um, with the Europass CV, I think you can also put a photograph, can't you? <laughs> but it's not necessary in the UK to use to use a photograph. You don't need it. Anything else? Any other questions? Is being asked by someone else, but should we list all old jobs or just some typical jobs? Okay, I'm going to say this again. Only put things on your CV that are relevant to the job that you are applying for. So if you had a job, let's imagine you're applying for a job as a store manager and you had a job when you were 15 handing out leaflets uh, for, I don't know, for your scouts club or something like that. You don't need to put that because that doesn't relate to the job that you're applying for. The only time that you need to write jobs that are related to the job that you're applying for is if you were like the person who asked before when they're transitioning from one field and they're applying to another field. For example, the person who was in biology and now they want to work in accountancy. They have no jobs in accountancy, so they need to write the jobs that they had in biology, okay? So only include things on your CV that are relevant to the position. Don't waste your potential employer's time. They don't have a lot of time. They don't care. They've got a hundred other CVs to go through with hundreds of other people who want the same job as you, okay? So just bear that in mind. It's all about saving people's time, especially the potential employer's time. <laughs> and it's also about just keeping things concise, okay? And direct and straight to the point. Any other questions? I think that's it. If I live in the UK, may I send a CV in French? Why would you send a CV in French to someone in the UK? Unless they're specifying that they want the CV in French, then no, you send it in English. <laughs> Is an engineering resume different? It will depend on the job that you're applying for, Majid. Um, I would guess that no. I don't think it will be too different from this, but have a look at some examples of engineering CVs and see what people have included. Anyway, I think that is it. We've got nothing else there. Let me jump back over to this one here. So we've had a look at the complete CV. Great. Um, final thing I want to talk about is where to find work. So where can you apply for jobs in the UK? Where can you find jobs? Now, a lot of the time, if it's something like retail or hospitality, so working in a, in a restaurant or in a bar or in a shop or something, a lot of the time they will put a piece of paper that says uh, that they have a vacancy and then they need someone for that job. So when you move to the UK, do keep your eyes peeled and CVs ready in your bag <laughs> and then you can go and hand in your CV that way. I wouldn't post your CV, if I'm honest. The typical way of sending CVs is by email or in person, okay? So here are some websites that you can use to find work. I have linked them all below in the description, so go and take a look at those. You can try Indeed, Read, Monster. They're all very similar. They're all job websites. Um, Read and Monster, I would say, have more like admin kind of positions, like admin or engineering or something like that, more like office-based. Indeed, you can find any kind of work on there. Maybe it's working in a bar or hotel or something like that if you're looking for something like this. LinkedIn, um, which is something that a lot of people are familiar with. You can find a lot of different jobs on there, especially professional work. And then the last one here is one that's not so common um, until you move to the UK and then you realise, oh, everyone's using it. And that's Gumtree. Now, Gumtree is not actually a jobs website. Gumtree is a website kind of like Craigslist, if any of you are familiar with Craigslist. Um, the difference is that we don't really use Craigslist in the UK. It's just full of porn and people who want to have certain relations with people for money, <laughs> let's say. Um, Gumtree is a little bit cleaner. You can find kind of casual work here, so I wouldn't go to Gumtree if I were looking for professional work, such as in an office or engineering or nursing or something like that. 
If you are a doctor or a nurse and you're watching this live or watching this replay, then go straight to the NHS website, NHS, okay, NHS, that's the National Health Service. Go on there, look for the jobs directly on there. They will not be on any of these websites, okay? So that is it. Thank you very much for watching this live. If you've learnt something new from this live, then please give this video a like. I would really appreciate it. It's a free way to help me out and also share my channel with your friends. Any final questions before we finish? Let me go on big face mode. Any final questions before we finish? Let's see. Am I for up to 35 years old? Mention skills can include a lot of information. So is it enough to mention all specializations? I'll repeat myself again. Only mention things that are relevant to the job that you are applying for, <laughs> okay? So if you've got some kind of qualification, I don't know, in food health safety training, and you're applying for a job as an accountant, you don't need to put that, okay? So just think, common sense. Is this related to the job I'm applying for? Yes or no? That's it. <laughs> Some people put a lot of words to describe their skills. Do you think the skills inside a sentence are better? No, Priscilla, I think putting them in bullet points is really good. Why? Because they're quicker to read. Yeah, so the employer doesn't need to read this big chunk of text and waste time. The employee can just see the bullet points and go, yep, yeah, okay, good, we need someone with that, we need someone with that, we need someone with that. Here's a really, really big tip as well. When you're applying for jobs and you have, ah, oh, what's it called, a job description, and you have the job description and you have a description of the kind of person that they're looking for. So they may say something like, we're looking for someone who can work towards deadlines, is interested in progressing in the company and is able to work using their own initiative. Write those phrases on your CV. So in your, uh, in either your personal profile or in the skills section in bullet points um, or in a list form, even like what John did, you, you could put them there as well. Highly motivated, works towards deadlines, able to keep to strict deadlines, blah, 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 okay? Then the employer already has a person in mind and they see your CV and they know that you've read the job description because you're mentioning all the things that were in that job description. It's a big, big, big tip. Any other questions? I've got a couple more minutes. Sometimes the name of our career is complicated to translate into English. Any idea how's the best way to do it? Just try your best. <laughs> um, if you mean like the name of the company, sometimes our career is complicated. So do you mean, I'm guessing career, you mean the, the job, right? That you're not using career as a false friend, meaning your degree, okay? That's a false friend. In many languages, a career is a false friend for a degree. Be really careful. A career in England is a job, all right? So um, if it's difficult to translate, just try your best. You know, that's all you can really do. So long as it's clear what you did, it's fine. If the employer called me for an interview, must I come to the UK? No, it's quite common nowadays to do Skype or Zoom interviews. So don't worry, I've done Skype interviews for jobs in the UK because I was living in the north of England and the job was in the south near London. So I just did my interview on Skype and that's absolutely fine. If I send you my email, uh, could you send me a model of your CV? Well, I don't have a model of my CV. I don't want people to have my CV because of course it's got my personal information on it. <laughs> um, but I put some examples down below in the description. Go and check those out. Do some employers, ex-companies, organizations keep or hold people's school call for, school? Ah, school certifications. No, they don't. Um, they will ask for a copy of them. So make sure that you have copies. Or what will happen is when you go to the interview, you take your original and they will just do a photocopy there and then. All right? They do not take your your certi your certificates from you. If they do, that's not right. Okay, it's not right and you, you need to get them back. They should make copies. 
How about Total Job? Yep, that's another one. Oh, there are hundreds of job websites. I just listed some of the most common ones. Um, what else? Can you recommend UK job websites? Foreigners, I did. I've already mentioned them. Go watch this again. And also look down in the description. <laughs> What's the difference between a resume and a CV? I mentioned that at the beginning. Please go and watch that. Watch the replay. To make my CV brief two pages, can I only go with positions I held instead of companies? Yes, I guess you could. Anything that's relevant and concise, it's fine. Okay, I think that is it. It is also time for me to go because I have a lesson soon. So I need to go prepare for that. I hope you've all enjoyed this and you've learned how to create a CV. Please do go and check out those links down below in the description. So they take you to some examples of different kinds of CVs. They also take you to different uh, structures as well. There's also one that links you to cover letters if you need to write a cover letter, which is a letter that explains a little bit more about you in more detail than your CV does. It explains why you're applying for that specific job. Um, so it talks about that. I've not talked about that today because that is a huge topic and I didn't want to rush the CV lesson. Um, and also, what else did I put? List of jobs as well I put. So lots of things there. I think that is it guys. I will see you probably next week. I think I'll do another live next week. So we'll see what happens. And yes, enjoy your weekend. I hope you've learned something new from this lesson. Please don't forget to give this video a like, a thumbs up. That is very greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this live as well. And I will see you next lesson. Bye bye guys.